In this lesson, we'll learn about a few fundamental layer types in Figma design and use them to build the hero for the landing page of our portfolio website. A hero is a large section at the top of a web page, typically used to draw attention, convey a message, or prompt an action. We'll start by building an avatar using a shape with an image fill, then use text layers to add our name and a brief description about ourselves to welcome visitors to our page. You'll need a photo for the avatar, so make sure you have one ready to go on your computer. Now let's head over to the Explorations page and add our first layer. In Figma Design, layers are the building blocks you'll use to create your designs. There are a few fundamental layers you'll use in Figma Design. Text, shapes, and frames. Each layer represents a piece of your design, allowing you to separate the background, the objects, and the individual details. This helps you control how each layer looks, the order in which they appear, and how they interact with one another. Each layer type comes with various properties that control its appearance and behavior, such as its position on the canvas, or its width and height, what color it is, if it has a stroke and if there are blurs or shadows, or typographic settings like font family, weight, and line height, and many other properties. All these layers come together to create a flexible design where you control each detail. You can view every layer on the canvas in the Layers section in the left sidebar. Each layer has an icon to indicate the layer type or if there are any special properties applied to it, like this layer, which has an image fill. This section also shows us the hierarchy of our layers. For example, this image layer is above the text layer in the layer section. On the canvas, this is reflected with the image sitting on top of the text. We can move the image out of the way to reveal the text, or we can flip their order in the layer section so that the text layer sits on top of the image. To build our avatar, let's start by creating a shape. In Figma Design, there are six shape tools. Rectangle, Line, Arrow, Ellipse, Polygon, and Star. We want our avatar to be in a circular shape, so we'll use the Ellipse tool. Select the Ellipse tool from the toolbar or press O on your keyboard. Click anywhere on the canvas to place the ellipse. Notice how the right sidebar changed and now has some properties for us to edit. If we look in the layout section, we'll see the shape's dimensions are set to 100 by 100. The ellipse is too big, so let's resize it by entering 90 in the width and height fields. Press enter to apply the change. When we add a shape to the canvas, we are actually creating an outline of that shape, also called a vector path. By default, Figma fills the space inside a path with a solid gray color. If we want something different to go inside that path, we can use the Fill section in the right sidebar to give our layers color, weight, and texture. When you click on the Fill swatch, you can choose a fill type and adjust the settings unique to that fill type. We can make the fill a solid color like blue or red, combine multiple colors into gradients, add an image, or bring layers to life with video. Layers can have more than one fill. In the right sidebar, you can click the plus to add fills on top of one another to create a custom look, such as placing gradients over an image. drag them up and down to reorder them, or remove them from the mix. 
Fills are not limited to just shapes. They can also be applied to other layer types like text, frames, and sections. Since we want to include a profile picture for our avatar, let's change the fill to an image. With the shape selected, find the fill section in the right sidebar and click on the swatch to open the color picker. Select image near the top and click upload from computer. Choose an image from your computer and click open. If you'd like, you can adjust the image settings like saturation, contrast, and temperature. If an image isn't quite where you want it within a shape, there's a fix. With the layer selected, click the Crop Image button at the top of the right sidebar. Click and drag the image to reposition it. You can also resize the image. Rather than using these blue handles, which will resize the overall shape layer, click and drag the edges of the image. You can hold Shift while doing so to keep the image's ratio. Now let's move on to our bio. We'll need to create a couple of text layers for this portion. Text is a crucial component in our designs and can be used to communicate information or encourage action. The styling choices we make can also support visual hierarchy, convey the appropriate tone, and even make or break the accessibility of a design. In Figma Design, we create text layers using the text tool. You can find type-specific properties in the typography section of the right sidebar. Choose from a selection of free Google fonts or browse through fonts installed on your computer. You can hover over a font name to preview the font with your current text selection. You can also adjust other type properties such as size and weight, as well as formatting like line height and alignment. If you open type settings, you'll find even more properties to get the styling of your text just right, such as list styles, paragraph spacing, and letter casing, to name a few. The properties you'll see here will vary by font. Some fonts come with extra features that give you even more control. Hover over a setting to preview it. In addition to type properties, you can also apply other properties to text layers, such as fills, strokes, and effects. Let's create a text layer to add a greeting to our hero. Select the text tool from the toolbar or press T on your keyboard. Click on the canvas below the avatar and type your name. Notice how the layer name reflects the string of text on the canvas even when we change the string. It'll continue to do this until we give the layer a new name. Now let's create a second text layer to describe our interests and recent work history. Select the text tool again and click and drag to create a text box below the other layers. Make sure this is larger than the first text layer so it has enough space to fit our content. Don't worry about its exact size, we'll refine that later. As we type, you'll notice the text content stays contained in the text box and wraps to the next line instead of flowing off to the side. Why is this different from the previous text layer we created? Text layers have a resizing property that determines how the layer's dimensions, indicated by the bounding box, will respond when we change its contents. This property is set automatically based on how we created the text layer but we can update this setting at any time in the layout section of the right sidebar. If we click and drag to create a text layer, Figma assumes we want the text layer to be those exact dimensions and sets the resizing to fixed size. This means the width and height of the text layer will stay the same no matter how much text content there is. If we click on the canvas to create a text layer, the resizing property is set to Auto Width. This allows the text layer to grow horizontally to accommodate any new text we add. 
Auto height allows just the height of the text layer to grow and shrink depending on its contents. If we add more content, our text will automatically wrap to the next line, increasing the height of the text layer. If we remove the text, the height decreases to match. If we change the width of the text layer, the height and wrapping of our lines will automatically reflow. The text resizing property can also change when we interact with the text layer's bounding box. For example, let's say a text layer is set to auto width, where the bounding box accommodates the text content widthwise. If we drag the left or right edge of the bounding box, the text resizing property will change to auto height. This is because when we resize the width, Figma assumes we want the width of the layer to be fixed, but for the height to continue accommodating the text content. If we drag the corners of the bounding box, the text resizing will update to fixed size. Now, if we try to resize the left and right edges again, it will stay fixed size. For all the designers watching, we know our layers are looking a bit misaligned right now, so let's fix that. Click any blank area to deselect all layers. Then, click and drag the cursor over the layers to select them. In the right sidebar, click Align Left to align their leftmost edges. That's better. Let's move on to styling our text. Right now, the text is a bit small, so we should make everything bigger and easier to read. We also want to create some visual hierarchy to draw attention to a few key areas. Select the layer with your name and go to the typography section in the right sidebar. The first dropdown shows that we're using Inter as our font. We'll stick to Inter, but feel free to pause the video and explore the other available fonts. Then join us when you're ready to move on. We want to add more weight or thickness to the font. Click on the current style and select a bolder choice, like this black one for Inter. Then open the font size dropdown and change it to 40. Since our name is overlapping with our statement, let's use Big Nudge to reposition it. You can reposition layers by nudging them with the arrow keys on your keyboard. There are two nudge types in Figma. Small Nudge uses arrow keys to reposition layers and moves layers in increments of one by default. Big Nudge uses Shift with arrow keys and moves layers in increments of 10 by default. Nudge settings come in handy when you want to reposition objects with more precision than clicking and dragging with your cursor. You may find yourself wanting a different nudge amount, especially if you're working with a specific grid system, like an eight pixel grid system where nudging in increments of eight would be more useful. To customize your nudge settings, open the Figma menu from any design file then go to Preferences and click Nudge Amount. Enter your desired small nudge and big nudge values in the fields provided. Then close to apply. Now let's update the font weight to medium and the font size to 28. Our text is bleeding over the bottom edge of the bounding box because the text resizing is set to fixed size. Let's change it to auto height. All of our text is now wrapped within the text layer's bounds, and the text layer will grow and shrink vertically if we change the contents. Then we can draw focus to career highlights by updating the weight to bold. We can do this by clicking and dragging to select specific text, then updating its styling. Lastly, give the lines of text some breathing room so they're easier to read. Make sure they're not too far apart, as that will also make it less readable. So we'll set the line height to 38. We'll also set the paragraph spacing to 16. In the final design, this text layer will be much wider than it is right now. As mentioned, we'll refine this in a later lesson, but if you'd like, we can resize the text layer to make it wider.
Just be sure that the text resizing property is still set to auto height before moving on. Now that the basic elements of our hero are done, we need a way to keep them together. So let's place them into a frame. Frames are a core building block in Figma. They act as containers for other layers, allowing you to organize them into cohesive designs. You can use frames to create individual assets, like icons or buttons, segments of your design, like a navigation bar, or an entire screen or layout, like a website or mobile app design. You can even place or nest other frames within frames. We refer to any layer that acts as a container as a parent, while any frames or layers inside of it as children. Frames that sit directly on the canvas are referred to as top-level frames. You can explore frames layers in the Layers panel. Use the toggle next to the frame layer to expand and view any child layers. Similar to other layer types, Frames support properties like dimensions, fills, and effects. But frames also give us access to more powerful features, like clip content, that allows you to hide any child content that goes outside of the frame's bounds, or the tools for creating responsive designs, like auto layout and constraints, and allow you to make your static designs into interactive prototypes. To create a frame, select the Frame tool in the toolbar or press the F key. Click anywhere on the canvas to place a frame or click and drag to create a frame with a custom width and height. We'll click and drag a frame around all of the hero elements. Don't worry about making this perfect, we'll come back to sizing later. Double check the layers section to make sure all elements are nested inside the frame. If they are, the elements will be indented directly below the frame and will be hidden on the canvas when you click the visibility icon. If they're not in the frame, you can click and drag the layers into the frame. We'll come back to this hero in a later lesson after we've created a few more elements for our portfolio. To easily find our hero later, double-click the frame in the Layers section and rename it to Landing Page Hero. Well done! We had just built the first element for our portfolio website by creating a few fundamental layers, shapes, text, and frames. You'll use these layers again and again throughout your Figma design journey. We learned how to apply some fundamental properties by adding images to our shapes as fills and creating visual hierarchy using key typography properties. Finally, we placed our layers into a named frame to keep everything organized. If you're feeling adventurous, make a copy of what you created and tinker around with different layer properties. Design is an explorative process and this is a great time to take risks. Try that colorful background. Test out a different font family and see what you like. For more inspiration, stay tuned as Katie and Lauren share their portfolio riffs and ways to find ideas for your own.